Thank you so much for joining us today. So we are gathered here today for the next lecture in ComStech webinar series. Uh, the title of our topic today is Co-Combustion of Coal and Biomass for Clean Electricity Generation. And our today's honorable speaker is Professor Dr. Shahid Munir. He is the chairperson of Punjab Higher Education Commission. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us your precious time. Uh, now I would like to invite Professor Dr. Mohammad Iqbal Chaudhry, Coordinator General Comstech, to kindly introduce our distinguished speaker. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Azbillahi minashaitwani bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Good afternoon. We already have. Uh, about uh, 70 more people online and several, I'm sure that they are in different places. So uh, I'm extremely pleased that we are, uh, uh, we have with us today, Professor Dr. Shahid Mani, a very learned individual. You see, I know him uh, since long uh, because of multiple reasons. Number one, that he is from the same community of chemists a uh, slightly variant of chemistry of uh, chemical engineering and of course he has worked in this uh, field for quite some time and second of course his contribution as the chairman of uh, of Punjab Higher Commission Higher Education Commission Punjab is the largest province of Pakistan and has the largest number of education institutions and certainly as many problems as the institutions so so his managerial uh, skill, his academic excellence, his research productivity, and his capacity to uh, put them together into a more coherent uh, system which is enabling and supporting academic and research activities in the province of Punjab is certainly great for me. So I am uh, certainly an admirer of uh, Shahid Muneer and also of his vision. Today, we have invited him in a very prestigious series of conversations in which we actually invite the selected uh, speakers, the people who have accomplished a lot in their life and have made a significant contribution towards the development of education, science, technology, not only in the country, but also at the regional level also. Uh, I have heard uh, uh, my dear brother, Dr. Shahid Munir, multiple times, and every time it was always a very enriching experience of learning from someone who knows things from the, uh, from the core of it. And today, he's going to give us a technical lecture. And I'm very pleased to introduce him formally as a uh, uh, distinguished speaker of Comstack series. Uh, he's going to speak about co combustion of coal and biomass for clean electricity generation. Extremely important component. We know that coal is a very important resource, and Pakistan is very rich in terms of, and many of the YC member states are rich in terms of availability of coal as, uh, uh, as a key mineral resource. But then coal electricity generation from coal suffers from a whole range of different problems and uh, developing technologies and understanding the whole process of combustion, which can produce clean energy is, uh, is critically important, perhaps solve many of the problems which we face today because of the emissions uh, through coal generation. Professor Shahid Munir uh, has done his BSc uh, in chemical engineering and MSc in chemical engineering from the Institute of Chemical Engineering and Technology, University of Punjab. He won good gold medal by securing first position in MSc. He has uh, 10 years of industrial uh, experience on his credit. He obtained outstanding performance award from the Punjab University in 2005, he did his PhD from the University of Leeds, UK. His area of research is in biomass, coal, coal combustion, and his research has been related to uh, the particular field. And of course, he has published lots of uh, very good uh, uh, research publications uh, in national and international journals. 
He also worked in education management as a controller of the University of Punjab Control of Examination, which is the largest university in the country. During 2014 to 2019, he served as the director of the Center for Coal Technology, University of Punjab, during 2011 and 2018, which is a very specialized institution. He secured funding of around 2 billion in the project and launched many academic programs, including those uh, uh, which were not taught earlier. He transformed a center uh, for coal technology into an institute of energy and environmental engineering, broadening its horizon and making this a unique center uh, in the university structure of Pakistan has been the member of panel of experts of Punjab Power Development Board for establishment of coal fight power plants in Punjab. He was first one who challenged the third coal underground coal gasification project uh, by uh, some of the senior scientists and suggested that open pit mining in the coal field is the most visible one. Now, according to his proposed technology, coal is being mined in third uh, region uh, as open field, and there are several power generation systems that are actually currently working based on uh, based on uh, the suggestion which was made by Dr. Shahid Manir. Well, Dr. Shahid Manir served as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Chunk uh, during 2018 to 2022, and keeping in view his outstanding services, he was uh, appointed as the Vice Chancellor on additional charge at the University of Miawali, uh, again for about three years. And of course, then he has made seminal contributions in the development of these new institutions because we are relatively new universities. He assumed the additional charge in the course of Vice Chancellor, University of Sarkoda, which is uh, a big institution in uh, 2021. And he has worked hard to depoliticize the University of Sarkoda. Of course, this is a chronic problem in all universities, including uh, the one he has actually uh, led and certainly has contributed of making them merit based. In uh, recognition of his services in different spheres of academic endeavors, he was then appointed as the chairman of the Job Education Commission. Since then, he has made uh, major changes in the structure and functioning of. PHEC and also uh, connected this institution with the academic community in a more profound manner. He has been giving lectures on a number of topics, including reforming and developing commercialization and uh, business uh, endeavors of universities and, of course, society engagement of academic institutions uh, in, as one of, the, one of the key indicators. I would like to invite Professor Dr. Shahid Mani for his uh, presentation on a very interesting topic. Professor Shahid. Um, thank you uh, very much, uh, particularly to Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary Saab, who is a very eminent uh, scientist of Pakistan and Comstech for providing me the opportunity uh, to share uh, with all of you uh, some of my research findings. Uh, on the topic of uh, uh, co-combustion of coal and biomass for uh, clean electricity generation. Uh, so I will try to finish my talk, uh, talk within this stipulated time period. So the data presented in my presentation uh, is the international data and some of the data is about the Pakistan. Uh, a big challenge of the uh, 21st century is to provide uh, cheaper energy to everyone in environment-friendly manner. This is the one of the biggest challenge of the 21st century. And the scale of the challenge is so immense uh, that according to International Energy Agency, total global primary energy supply for the year 2019 was 606 exajoules. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, estimated that by 2040, the world's energy consumption will increase by almost uh, 50%. It is forecasted by the census experts that global population will approach to 
12 billion by the end of 21st century. The available energy per capita is one tons of oil equivalent and average world energy demand is 1.5 ton oils, uh, oils equivalent per capita. So it is anticipated that per capita energy demand will be four tons of oil equivalent by the end of 21st century. That means 300% uh, increase. Uh, we need a 300% increase until the end of the century. So uh, today, the electricity consumption of the world uh, per capita electricity consumption is uh, 3,265 kilowatt hour, whereas Pakistani uh, citizens uh, per capita uh, electricity consumption is 538 kilowatt uh, uh, hour. Uh, that is one sixth of our average global uh, uh, consumption per capita. So, if you uh, this is the situation, that means uh, we will be generating uh, 300 uh, percent more uh, electricity by the end of this century. And if you look at the uh, because the environmental pollution is linked with the uh, the ways and the manners. Uh, by which we produce the electricity because the electrical installments, the electrical generation plants, electricity generation plants are the major source of uh, uh, pollution in the world. So uh, if you look at the environmental conditions, the before industrial revolution, the carbon dioxide was 280 uh, ppm by volume. And today the carbon dioxide ppm uh, volume uh, in terms of volume is 360. So the according to IPCC, uh, the global average surface temperature has increased over the 20th century uh, by about 0.6 centigrade. And it is likely that most of this, this has been due to the increase in the greenhouse gas concentration. Uh, and this global average surface temperature is projected to increase a further 1.4 degree to 5.8 degree centigrade according to the various models and scenarios uh, that has been pre presented until uh, 2100. And if you uh, particularly uh, in the, uh, if you look at the uh, Pakistani uh, scenario, if you look at the installed uh, electricity generation capacity of Pakistan is now uh, 41,557 megawatt, out of which uh, 10,250 megawatt uh, is the hydel. Then the RLNG plants, RFO plants, and the coal share is 5,332 megawatts. Nuclear is 3,600. 47 natural gas, wind, solar, and uh, gas. So this is the the pie chart that 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 give you an idea that 61 percent of the Pakistani power generation is coming from the thermal sources. That means the uh, the oil, gas, uh, uh, and the and the coal. Next, and uh, the gas and oil, as I have mentioned, that 61 uh, percent is the share, and the Pakistan is generating. Uh, the uh, electricity from the, the and the oil is mostly the but the furnace oil is uh, uh, and high speed diesel is imported oil and the uh, and the Pakistan's uh, balanced recoverable oil reserves are depleting and uh, that are only uh, uh, 233 million barrels are left and similarly uh, the total production is 44 million barrels on an on an annual basis so the most of oil uh, uh, um, is the imported oil for power generation. So for the fiscal year 21 to 22, uh, Pakistan spent over 17 billion US dollars for the import of uh, oil, furnace oil. Uh, so if you look at the total export earnings of Pakistan is only, I mean, the 27 billion and the 17 billion are being spent on the uh, import of oil. Uh, for, for 27 and 18, Pakistan generated 32% of its electricity from RLNG and natural gas. And again, the RLNG is the imported, uh, is the imported uh, uh, raw material. And the Pakistan has only, Pakistan has only balanced the 21 trillion cubic feet of gas now, recoverable gas. So the current gas production is the uh, 3.16 billion cubic feet per day. And the demand is 4.3 uh, billion cubic feet per day for, uh, per day the year 2021 20, uh, data. So there is a gap. You, you can see more than 1 billion cubic feet per day for the gas. So the Pakistan is in a serious uh, crisis of the gas shortages and uh, the oil gases, oil. And the Pakistan is spending a huge money on the import of oil and gas. And if you look at the fuel share of the electricity generation for 2017, uh, this is the data you can say, you can see that uh, the 
uh, 23.65% electricity was generated through natural gas, 36.7 coal, and then this is the uh, the world key uh, energy statistics, and this is the world data, not the Pakistani data. So you can see that the coal is still the largest generation, the uh, source of power generation in the world. Uh, the world electricity generation coming from the coal is 36.7% and from natural gas is 23.6%. So it will, it will take a lot of time to uh, to shift away from the uh, fossil fuels to the renewables. The renewable share is only 10.8%. Hydro share is the 15.7% uh, and the nuclear is 10.4% only. Next. Uh, for the Pakistan, the coal is a, a game changer. In this slide, you can see that the Pakistan has an estimated around uh, about uh, uh, 187 billion tons of coal. Uh, the cost of this coal is in the international market is about 30 trillion US dollars. The third deposit is um, um, of about 175 billion tons. So the Pakistan has, has huge coal reserves. And uh, um, I myself has cal calculated that if uh, we use the traditional technologies that have only 27% plant efficiency, uh, this reserve is sufficient to provide 100,000 megawatts for 500 years. But if we use the, uh, the modern technologies, uh, the same reserve can serve for 700 years to, the, to the Pakistan to generate 100,000 megawatt. Uh, if you look at the coal uh, power generation for the world, the, the China is, is producing uh, 4,876 trillion watt hour. That is about uh, 10, 10, 10 lakh megawatt. And then the India is uh, 1,180 trillion watt hour. The United States is at uh, number three, Japan, Korea, South Africa. So you can see that the, that the how much electricity is being generated uh, from the coal, even in the modern world, like the, in the countries like the USA, Japan, Korea, South Korea, Russian Federation, Germany, uh, Australia, et cetera. Uh, the, this is the picture of the third coal field, yes. And this is the analysis. Golden Couch in 2004, Geological Survey of Pakistan in 1991, and then the Center for Coal Technologies, the only where I was the head for the seven years, we conducted the, uh, the, 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 the third coal analysis for the block four, five, and then the Oracle UK in, in 2012, then the, and then the uh, Mohammed Salim in uh, 2011, and the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Resources 2011 for the different blocks. And you can see uh, the important thing is the column of the ash. If you look at all the analysis of all the, uh, the blocks, you can say, see that the ash content is uh, less than 10%. And if you look at the sulfur content, the sulfur content is around 1%. For power generation, these are the two fundamentals that the, that the sulfur content should be around 1% or be less than 1% and the ash content should be less than 10%. So, uh, and if you look at the calorific value, GCV, gross calorific value, that is the energy content in the coal, uh, that, 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 that is fine, absolutely fine. So you can see that this coal is uh, very much suited for the power generation. Uh, uh, but, but the one thing, is only uh, very some that is the, the the moisture content. If you look at the moisture content given in the table, you can see that the moisture content is over forty percent, forty five percent. But once if you excavate and keep it in the in the in the natural environment and you apply the natural drying, uh, you can bring it down to to below the fifteen percent or the ten percent. If you if you bring it to the fifteen ten uh, percent, uh, then you can use it for the power generation because moisture is not moisture is not having any uh, any energy content. So when you generate energy, you need a net calorific value. That means you need to minus uh, to subtract the, the moisture content. So uh, the rest is uh, everything is okay with this coal. Uh, yes, the uh, the moisture content is higher, and that can be naturally uh, uh, dried in the in the desert. Yes, and if you uh, look at the other. Uh, coal resources and Sindh, uh, KPK, Azad Kashmir, these are the different provinces and the locations of the coals. The sulfur content in these coals are high, the ash contents uh, are, are high. So these coals are not suitable for the power generation. Yes, they can be, can be washed, pre-washed, and then we can bring down the ash content and then the sulfur content, and then we can apply some other techniques uh, to reduce the sulfur. And then uh, by reducing and bringing them in range, they can be mixed with the good quality coals and can be used for the power generation as, as well. Now, a very, very important thing is the plant efficiency. The, because the efficiency of plant, plant is 
directly linked with the uh, the the per unit cost of the electricity. If the efficiency of the plant is higher, then the the per unit cost will be low. If the efficiency of the plant is low, then the per unit elect electricity cost uh, the uh, of the cost will be high. Uh, the these are the technologies. CFBC mean the circulatory fluidized bed combustion technology, a very old technology. The net net plant efficiency is twenty nine percent. That means that if you feed a coal of uh, uh, hundred megawatt into a plant, you will get only twenty nine megawatt. The rest of the rest of the uh, the uh, uh, the energy in the coal will be wasted uh, um, uh, uh, in the form of heat. It's the next is the subcritical uh, technology uh, where the steam pressure is kept at 2,400 pounds per square inch and at a temperature of 565 degrees centigrade and the plant efficiency is 35%. And then the supercritical, uh, here the steam pressure is 3,600 uh, pounds per square inch and the and the temperature is 565 to 585 degrees centigrade and the plant efficiency is 38 percent pakistan has a one plant in which i was the technical advisor that we purchased from the china and it is the uh, the the sahiwal coal fired power plant in punjab uh, and it is a super critical uh, technology and this is a technology that is widely used in china and india as well uh, super critical. Then the next uh, uh, advanced technology is ultra ultra super critical. Uh, in this technology, uh, you kept the, you keep the temperature at three thousand six hundred pounds per square inch, and the and the temperature is uh, five hundred ninety three to six hundred twenty one degrees centigrade. The plant efficiency is forty two to fifty three percent. Then another technology that is called advanced and ultra critical uh, technology in which the five the steam pressure is kept as uh, 5,000 pounds per square inch and the temperature at, at 677 degrees centigrade, the plant efficiency remains about 45 to 46, 47 percent. And the best technology is now the IGCC, that is the integrated gas combined cycle in which the plant efficiency is about 52 and even 54 percent. So this is, these, this is a scenario of the net plant efficiency. So the best technologies are the integrated gas combined cycle. So what, by increasing uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, you can see the plant efficiency, the carbon dioxide emissions are reduced. Because if you get a 50, uh, you feed a, a coal of 100 megawatt and you get a 52 megawatt, the, uh, uh, the carbon dioxide emissions will be less. But if you feed a 100 megawatt coal and you get 29 megawatt, the plant, uh, the carbon dioxide emissions will be higher. So, by increasing a two percent in the plant efficiency, uh, you not only reduce the cost of the electricity, but also you reduce the carbon dioxide emissions by increasing a two percent plant efficiency. The five percent carbon dioxide emissions are reduced. This graph shows to this the subcritical plant range, and then the supercritical, and then the advanced ultra critical plant. The, then I want to share the clean coal technologies. Uh, one is the heavy media separation technology. These are the pre-treatment of the coal before feeding into the power plant. Then the electromagnetic separation, the coal, uh, the pulverized coal is passed through the mag mill and the electromagnetic separation, the 50% uh, the, uh, the or around uh, the, uh, the sulfur, the pyretic sulfur is reduced. And then a froth flotation technology, jig washing. These are the pre-treatment uh, technologies. And now in furnace technologies are the low NOx burners. This is the design of the burners that delays the combustion and reduce the, 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 the NOxes. Then the selective catalytic reduction, uh, the selective non-catalytic reduction technologies, air staging and reburning technologies. These are the in furnace technologies to control uh, the environmental pollution. And then the uh, flue gas desilverization are the post combustion technologies. The flue gas is treated then the uh, CFBC circulating fluid is bad combustion, uh, and then the uh, efficiency improvements, co-combustion, carbon dioxide capturing by, by amines, uh, and, and then the oxy coal combustion, the integrated gas combined cycle, then the gasification and fissure trough synthesis, then the direct, direct coal liquefaction, 
and then the substitute natural gas production you can gasify the coal and then fed into the natural gas pipeline and then the the use of coal for fertilizers so these are the, coal, uh, the some of the clean coal technologies 19 clean coal technologies that i have been i have listed uh, for you 20, uh, sorry, uh, uh, more, some, a uh, uh, couple of more, the humic acid production for coal and the graphene production from coal, these are the clean coal technologies. Then the, uh, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the environmental emission control limits, uh, uh, the gaseous uh, emission uh, of the sulfur dioxide from the power plants in Pakistan uh, are the 1700 uh, milligram per normal meter cube. And the noxes, the uh, the the oxides of the nitrogen, 1,200 parts per million. And similarly, the uh, particulate particulate matter is the 500 uh, milligram per normal meter cube. These are the environmental emission control limits. These limits are much wider than the international or the European uh, standards. If you uh, uh, look at the um, uh, this thing about the uh, other than the CO2 emissions, that is the NOxes, the NO2 will have a global warming potential 40 times greater than that of carbon dioxide by weight over a hundred years time horizon. So, uh, uh, if you uh, look at the how the NOx, uh, the NOxes affect the uh, the environment, then you can see. Uh, next, next. How? The uh, when the noxes are emitted uh, from the uh, power plants, the noxes in the uh, in the sunlight uh, have the fall, uh, have the uh, following uh, chemical reactions: the photo photolysis, uh, the N2O, then NO, and then it reacts with the ozone and it depletes the ozone layer in the stato in the stratosphere. Uh, since there is no net consumption of NO, it is a chain reaction. It is possible for each stratospheric NO molecule in its lifetime to destroy 10 raised uh, uh, power 12 to 10 raised power 13 molecules of ozone by conversion to O2. Uh, so uh, how dangerous it is and how rapidly it can deplete the ozone layer. Another effect of the noxes is the smog, photochemical smog formation. And it is a very, very serious issue in Pakistan uh, in every winter. And it, it, how the photochemical smog um, uh, uh, is uh, formulated, you can see that the noxes that are being emitted from the tra from the tra from the traffic wave vehicles, uh, from the chimneys of the industry, from the chimneys of the power plants, when they go into the environment, uh, in the uh, in the presence of solar radi radiations and in the presence of organic compounds in the environment, uh, they form a photochemical smog. Another impact of the noxes is the acid rain. So the major, if you analyze the, the, the rainwater, you will find that uh, there are uh, sulfuric acid and nitric acid uh, into the, into the rainwater. This is also because of the emissions of the sulfur dioxide and NOx emissions uh, from uh, these uh, installations into the environment. So, what is the, uh, the solution to uh, this problem? So the one of the solution is a co-combustion of coal with biomass. Uh, and it is a very, very popular. Uh, I remember that uh, in, in UK, it was mandatory for, the, for all the power plants to mix the biomasses uh, uh, in their power plants. Uh, and um, it, it was a target that to reach to 20% of the uh, 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 to mix the bi biomasses with the uh, with with the coals. So meet this targets. The many of the uh, the industries they grew the energy crops, the plants that can grow and that can that can grow up uh, uh, in uh, three to four months. They cut the trees and then pulverize them and mix them with the pulverized coal and they were burning it in their power plants. For instance, the Drax power plant uh, is generating four thousand megawatt. The coal-fired power plant in UK. They were also mixing the uh, the uh, the biomasses with the uh, uh, with their uh, coal-fired power plants. So um, 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 uh, the the beauty of this technology is that it is a retrofit technology. That means you do not need to have any design modifications into the power plant. Um, uh, absolutely no 
no design modification same burner same boiler same uh, generator same uh, same uh, steam turbine uh, simply you need to just pulverize the uh, the biomasses uh, you need to add up a pulverization um, uh, mill uh, uh, that can um, pulverize the biomass and mix it and burn it and you can uh, you can uh, replace uh, some of the portion of your of your fossil fuel uh, with the with the with the with the biomass material i mean the plant materials uh, the advantage is that when you reduce the fossil fuels you are reducing the, the the co2 because the biomasses are considered to be a co2 neutral fuels because in their lifetime the amount of co2 they absorb uh, on combustion they emit the same the same amount of carbon dioxide so there is no net addition of the carbon dioxide into the atmospheric cycle and um, uh, this is a huge uh, uh, um, um, advantage of using the and and there were a renewable obligation scheme launched by the uk government uh, the power plants uh, the, the, uh, those use the biomasses along with the with the coal they were given the renewable ob ob uh, obligation certificates the carbon credits and uh, um, I, I, I am against the, the idea of the energy crops because, you know, in, in, in the world, the world is facing a, a, a crisis of the food shortages. So we do not have the luxury uh, to use the land for the energy crops. Uh, so we, uh, I, I propose that the agricultural residues that are not used as animal fodder, that can be used. Uh, that waste can be used uh, uh, along with the coal for power generation, and it is a retrofit technology. In this way, we can manage the waste management, and we can convert this waste into a positive tool. Uh, and this is the uh, this is the best idea. And by exploiting the reductive form of this the, 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 this biomass, we can uh, we can reduce the noxes uh, coming from the power plants. So, and we can reduce the carbon dioxide emissions and we can reduce the sulfur dioxide emission because the, these biomasses, they do not have uh, sulfur content in, them, in themselves. So, uh, it is a wonderful idea to, uh, to co to co fire. If you go to the IEA, International Energy Agency, Task 32, on the internet, you can, you can see that there are many and, and hundreds of power plants now, they are using the, uh, the co-combustion uh, technology. There is a list, you can find a list in hundreds of farmers in, in the European countries who are using uh, the biomasses along with the coal. So I will give you an idea. This is the uh, the uh, the slide, the pie chart that gives you idea that how much power plants are using uh, the co-combustion of coal and biomass in um, in Australia, Austria, Canada, Dan Denmark, Belgium, UK, Taiwan, Sweden, Spain, Norway, Netherlands, Italy, Indonesia, and Germany. But if you look at the Pakistani potential, Pakistan is the fifth largest producer of uh, our sugar or the sugar cane and Pakistan has uh, more than 83 sugar mills in the country and having uh, if we alone burn the the uh, when you extract the juice out of the uh, sugar cane you are left with the bagasse and if you we only uh, burn the bagasse we can generate 2000 megawatt of electricity uh, uh, and uh, um, um, let's uh, come to the next slide and you can see the data this is the crushing capacity and the cane available and the average recovery of sugar per capita consumption contribution this is the uh, the value of the sugar industry in pakistan pakistan has abundantly available the sugar cane bias and the best strategy would be mix it with the coal and use for power generation yes this is the projection of the bagas uh, if you look at the bagas in the second line you can see that this is the projection for the bagas and this is the projection for the power generation. Yes. If you look at the cotton stock, so when, when we pluck the, uh, the cotton, we are left with the, uh, with the cotton stock and the branches. So the annual amount of cotton stock revenue, it is a absolutely a waste. Uh, that is 13.2 million tons and the people burn it in the fields. So by utilizing them, we can uh, uh, convert this negative value biomass into a positive fuel. 
by solving a disposal problem and producing high value fuels now this table gives you the ultimate and proximate analysis and uh, high heating values of uh, number 1 is the on the top if you look at sm sm mean she meal uh, she meal is a biomass from africa and then the cs is the cotton stock pakistani cotton stock and then the wood chips wc in the third line that is a wood chips from the from the britain and then sbr is a sugar cane bagas sbr and sbs and sbt three sugar cane bagas from the uh, punjab from the different regions sbr is the sugar cane uh, sugar cane bagas from the hindiar khan then the sugar cane bagas from the shorkey or shorkot sbs and then the sugar cane bagas from the tandrewala sbt then the russian coal one and russian coal two that are being used in the uk power plants if you look at the volatile matters that matter content in the first line all the biomasses you will you will find that the volatile matter is higher in the biomasses and in the russian coal one and russian coal one two the the volatile matter is content that means the volatility of the uh, of the biomasses is higher so they uh, uh, are higher Uh, similarly if you look at the fixed carbon content the fixed carbon content in the coal is higher and in the all the biomasses the fixed carbon content is less and if you look at the ash the ash content in the biomasses is low and the ash content in the coals are higher the moisture content in the biomasses are higher and in the uh, coals are, are are low so if you look at the ultimate analysis the said the same is the case with the total carbon Higher in the in the coals and lower in the biomasses. Um, if you look at the oxygen content, the oxygen content in the biomasses are higher, and in the coal is low. So that it means that the uh, the uh, the biomasses are highly oxygenated fuels. So it is very easy to burn them. So uh, uh, so they can solve the problem of coal burning if you if you mix them. The uh, the, uh, the, the volatility is higher. The oxygen content is higher. The sulfur content is very very low. So if you replace them with the coal, they will reduce the sulfur, and similarly, uh, they will reduce the carbon dioxide emissions, and uh, they will reduce the noxes uh, as well. If you look at the bulk density given in the second last line, and then the heating values, if you look at the heating values as well. Next slide. So particle analysis carried out by these the sugar cane bagasses and the Russian coal. These are the particle size uh, analysis. The mean mm -hmm. diameter is given to you, and then the other values. And if you look at the uh, the TGA thermal gravimetry uh, uh, non-isothermal uh, analysis, uh, you can see that the uh, the the biomasses, the cotton stock, ha having the high the highest peak, and then sugar cane bagas too, and then the she meal. Uh, and you can see that you will see you you can um, interpret the results from the ultimate and proximate table that the biomasses having the higher content of oxygen, higher content of volatile matter, so their peaks will be higher. Their DW by DT mean the rate of weight loss is higher and at a lower temperature. Uh, the, the, this this shows that. And the uh, sorry, go to the back side. Yeah, and the long term section that that reflects the uh, the uh, the burning of uh, you can say uh, of the lignin content in the coal. So uh, uh, the biomasses are consist of the heavy cellulose, cellulose, and lignin content. The first of all, the first uh, short peak peak that is in the range between zero to one hundred degrees centigrade. That is the weight loss due to the moisture content. Then uh, the 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 rise the rising section. Is the hemicellulose, then cellulose, and then lignin, uh, the content burning, or the or you can say the char oxidation. Then, if you look at the DTE uh, curves, you can say the the fuel sample DW by DT percent per second. This gives you another idea. In this uh, slide, you can also see the the Russian coal as well. For the Russian coal, you can say that it it started to burn late. Uh, yeah, at three hundred degrees centigrade, it started to Uh, to burn, 
and then the uh, with the balances they started to run at 200 degrees centigrade and if you look at the peaks the, the the rate of weight loss is very high that means the the rate of reaction of burning in the uh, in the biomasses is much higher uh, compared to the to the coals and this is the chemical analysis the lignin content is in green cellulose and hemicellulose of all the sugar cane uh, bases so uh, and similarly the cellulose and lignin chemical analysis cotton stalk she meal uh, rice straw corn stalk large bag and and different biomasses yes experimental setup on which we conducted the experiments for the coal and biomass and this is the roston uh, feeder main um, uh, coal feeder and then the on the right hand side is the reburn uh, feeder the secondary coal feeder and then yes this is the experimental setup 20 kilowatt down fired combustor this is the my, my picture on the rig 20 kilowatt experimental setup overall height of the rig is 3.5 meter 43 utility ports along the furnace and the flexible um, uh, we have the holes along the axis and uh, a series of filters and dryers prior to online gas analyzers, thermocouples, PC data logger, which registers the reading after every 10 seconds on the Excel sheet supported by PDAC software. And this is the experimental setup. You can see the natural gas supply. Uh, the gas supply is necessary to heat up the furnace to reach to 1000 degrees centigrade, then we enter the coal, then the primary water supply, cooling water supply, secondary water supply, coal burner, coal and thermocouples, control panel, dilution air line, flue gas line, water seal tray, yes. This is the sampling system, different analytical equipment to measure the oxygen, to measure the CO, carbon monoxide, Sulfur dioxide, yes, noxes, and noxes and sulfur dioxide analyzer panel. Yes, the experimental methodology. Uh, in the furnace, we enter the coal and we enter the air. This is the formula to calculate that how much air would be required for a complete combustion. Uh, complete combustion. SR1 is the we call it the stoichiometric uh, region one, uh, and then the stoichiometric region two, and then the resonance time tau, and then how we have calculated the NOx uh, reduction uh, from the baseline, and then we have converted it into 6% baseline. That is the industrial requirement, yes. Then this is the reburn fuel fraction uh, mass flow rates, of the uh, reburn fuel input. Yes, this is the steam, steam, uh, schematic diagram. This is very important for you. Uh, from the top of this rig experimental setup, we enter a coal, measured quantity of coal. Stoichiometric calculations are done that for one, to burn one kg of coal, how much air is required for complete combustion. Then the air is also entered from the top into the burner. The blue is installed at the top, and some of the air is injected in, 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 into the rig uh, through any of the port. This is called the air staging. And similarly, on the left hand side, you can say the Knox reburning is the same scheme. The difference is in air staging, you divide the the environment of the combustion into two distinct zones inside the uh, the furnace. The one is the sub stoichiometric region, and the other is the over stoichiometric region. In uh, one of the zone is the fuel lean environment, and in one of the zone is the fuel rich environment. One of the zone is the oxygen deficient environment. The second one is the oxygen excess environment. Uh, this is the air staging. Uh, it is a combustion delayed technique, and similarly. In the re NOx reburning, the furnace is divided into three distinct combustion environment. Uh, the first primary zone, then reburn zone, and then burnout zone. So uh, this is the technique.
through which uh, we can uh, we exploit the fuel air ratio combustion environment and we reduce the uh, the noxes yes yes so th this is previous this is the temperature profiles uh, along the axis from top to the bottom uh, the the temperature measurements yes yes and this is the if you look at the uh, unstaged when simple combustion you mix the biomasses with the coal and then you have air staging you when you you, you divide the experimental rig into two zones then you can see the nox reduction uh, percentages and the nox percent emissions um, the error given uh, the nox for the nox reduction the right hand side and you for the uh, nox emissions uh, you can see from uh, to the left hand side if the by expanding the primary zone stoichiometry the sr1 uh, point uh, 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 the, the important point is the primary zone stoichiometry sr1 will be a one a uh, when uh, you uh, you feed into the furnace that's the amount of air that is required for a complete combustion and when you uh, you reduce the supply of air that becomes 0.9 point 0.7 this is a reducing environment and if you supply the air that is required more stoichiometry be more than the, than for a complete combustion that we call as 1 1.05 1.1 and 1.2 that means 1.1 means the 10% excess air 1.2 means 20% excess air 0.9 means 10% uh, less air than than that for, than uh, than required for a complete combustion 0.8 means 20% less air required Than the complete combustion. So this is the data you you can see. And similarly, burn out means the combustion efficiency. Burn out means the uh, the uh, you 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 uh, collect the ash from the uh, bottom of the furnace uh, uh, and you check that how much coal is unburned. So the biomass blending ratio is at the bottom on the vertical axis. Uh, the when the five percent biomasses were were added. Uh, you can see that how much is the uh, the combustion efficiency, and when the 25 percent uh, or uh, uh, the biomasses were burned uh, for the cotton stock and the sheep meal biomasses, you can see the combustion efficiency was more than 99 percent. This is the reburn. When you uh, uh, divide the furnace into three distinct zones, if you look at the uh, schematic diagram, you can see the primary combustion zone will supply 5 percent excess air. so that all the coal can burn so all the nitrogen content that is a part of the coal that can be converted into ano that comes into the second zone in which we add the biomass in the second zone and then we add the the, the biomass that mean one of the fuel coal is coming from the top and the second fuel the second fuel the biomass is fed um, in between the uh, furnace and uh, you can see in the middle of the furnace it's a fuel rich zone and now the stoichiometry has become can vary from 0.66 to 0.98 that means the 40% less air or the 70% less air that the, the, the central zone is the fuel rich zone and the oxygen deficient zone and then again the burnout zone third zone in which we again supply the air the excess air 1.16 means the 16% excess air to complete the combustion this is a schematic diagram and on the right hand side the these are the chemical reactions that are taking place uh, in the central area the reburn zone all the noxes that are coming from the top zone the first primary zone that are coming into the second zone where the biomasses are fed the biomasses are devolatilized in the presence of heat on the devolatilization they emit the, the hydrocarbon radicals ch1 ch2 ch3 ch4 these ch radicals they attack on the noxes coming from the primary zone and convert them into molecular nitrogen you can see that the nitrogen is a part of the air and it is not the pollution so you convert the noxes into uh, molecular nitrogen by the phenomenal 
uh, reactions and the reverse Zeldovich mechanisms. And we have tested in NFH paralysis ring as well uh, that these mechanisms are going on uh, um, in, the, uh, in the central zone. So this is a technology by exploiting the fluid erasure ratio and by exploiting the hydrocarbon power of the biomasses, the, the, the radicals that the, uh, the biomasses have, they attack on the noxes and by these reactions, they convert into the, uh, into the molecular nitrogen. And then in the, in the third zone, we again inject the air, we again inject, the, I mean, the excess oxygen uh, to, to completely burn the coal. So this is the philosophy in this technology. Yes. So the fixed parameters, the overall stoichiometry was fixed at 1.16, 16% uh, yeah, uh, excess air. Uh, the, uh, why the 16%? Because when we um, have a 5% excess, uh, excess air, you will have a 1% oxygen in the flue gases. And if you have a 10% excess air, you will have 2% oxygen in the flue, flue uh, gases. And if you have a 15% excess air, you will have almost 3% uh, the oxygen um, uh, level uh, in the, uh, the flue gases. And that, that shows that the uh, that you can get the best combustion efficiency. Then the primary air flow rates were uh, fixed since it is used to transport the coal into the combustor into the combustor. The uh, and then the primary zone stoichiometry was fixed at 1.055 percent excess air. Uh, on the optimization of the rig, the rig was optimized, and on the basis of that op op optimization experiments, uh, these uh, parameters were fixed. And then the primary zone length was fixed by the reburn fuel injection location, by calculating the residence time, this, the, uh, uh, we fix the, uh, the length of the zones, that how much time is needed to burn the coal into the rig. So these uh, three distinct zone, zones were um, uh, identified uh, by, the, by the optimization experiments. Then the variable parameters were the reburn fuel fractions, that how much biomass uh, will be fed 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 30%, 30% to evaluate the effect of biomasses as a secondary fuel or reburn fuel on the NOx uh, reduction. And then the reburn zone stoichiometry uh, was varied as well, uh, 0.6789. And then the reburn zone residence time was varied. Yes. So if you look at the, uh, the experiments, the distance from the burner uh, in centimeters is given at the x-axis. And on the y-axis is the oxygen and CO concentrations. Uh, and if you look, you have seen that uh, the uh, coal plus she burn, 15% uh, she uh, meal as a reburn fuel as a secondary fuel, 15% uh, cotton stack as a reburn fuel in, in the middle of the, uh, the graph, and then 15% is the, is the coal on coal. And you can see a bell shaped in the center is, is a bell shaped curve, that means uh, the uh, the blue line is the carbon monoxide that shows that the in the middle of the rig is a fuel rich oxygen deficient zone. When the, as the CO concentration is higher, that means the rig has been the experimental furnace has been divided into three distinct zones. The first zone is the Dr. Zone. Dr. Chahe? Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Chai, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, sir. We're we're a little short on time. Okay, uh, just five minutes. Okay, I will wrap it in five minutes. Okay, yes. okay. Thank you. And thank you, you can see much. that the that the that that the ideally we have divided the furnace into three distinct zones. Yes, next. And now the NOx reduction. If you look at the reburn zone residence time, uh, we get the 1.6, 1 1.7, and 1.8 are the points for all the biomasses. Uh, we uh, get the uh, get the maximum NOx reduction for fifteen percent as a, um, um, biomass as a reburn fuel. Yes, and uh, the plant efficiencies you can see the data for the plant efficiencies reburn residence time versus carbon burnout at fifteen percent reburn fuel fraction. Yes, next slide. This is the ideal distance. Then the residence time fuel fractions. Yes, next. And then the NOx reduction versus the reburn fuel fractions. 5%, 10%, 15%, 20 25 30% for all the biomasses and the coal. And you can see that by increasing the reburn fuel fraction, the NOx, NOx reduction is also 
uh, increasing. So there is a direct link between the ribbon full fraction and the NOx reduction. Next. And, uh, and this is the plant efficiency. Yes. Next. And this is the secondary zone stoichiometry versus the ribbon fuel fraction. By increasing the ribbon fuel, oxygen deficient environment is being built. This is the, the second zone, that means the ribbon zone in which all the chemical reactions were taking place, the carbon burnout versus the stoichiometric ratio of this zone, secondary zone. Yes, next. And this is again the carbon burnout, the plant efficiency versus, versus RFF for the sugarcane molasses and the Russian coal. Yes, next. Then the second, the second zone, the ribbon fuel psychometry versus noxious. And you, we can see that the stronger is the oxygen deficient or the fuel rich zone, the more will be the NOx reduction. And then the sulfur dioxide emissions by increasing the uh, ribbon fuel fraction, the SO, uh, SO2 reduction is also increasing. So the conclusions, uh, number one, in blended, blended unstaged co combustion did not display convincing results with regard to NOx reduction. A maximum of 7% NOx reduction was achieved with 15% thermal biomass blend of she meal with Russian coal. In the case of air staging, when the furnace was divided into two distinct zones, it was revealed that a decrease in the primary zone stoichiometry has a direct impact on NOx reduction. The lower the value of primary zone um, uh, stoichiometry, the greater is the NOx reduction. However, a stoichiometric ratio of 0.9, that means a 10% uh, oxygen deficient zone was found to be optimum with regard to NOx reduction and char burnout in the uh, case of air staging. So number three, uh, increases in biomass blending ratio gave subsequent increases in NOx reduction. A biomass blending ratio of 10% was found to be optimum for NOx reduction, resulting in 51% and 60% NOx reduction with she meal and cotton stock respectively. All these the results were for the air staging technology. Now, the co-combustion uh, of coal with biomasses also gave an improvement in char burnout efficiency, which could be due to higher volatile matter of the biomasses and the higher reactivity of the porous biomass char. It was found that the reburn fuel fraction has a direct positive impact on uh, the NOx reduction. This is, these are the results for the, uh, the reburn uh, technology in which the furnace was divided into three distinct zones. The NOx reductions of 84%, 83%, 81%, and 75% were obtained with an optimum level of 15% of reburn fuel fraction on thermal basis for cotton stack, she meal, and sugar cane bagas of Rahim Yar Khan and wood chips, respectively. NOx reductions of 76% and 75% obtained with an optimum level of 10% of RFF. I mean, for 15%, the results are given in five, point number five, and for 10%, a ratio, the results are given in point six. Point number seven, reburn zone residence time was found to have a direct positive impact on, on, on NOx reduction. Reburn zone residence time was found to be an optimum range of 1.3 to 1.5 seconds. It was found that the higher the reburn fuel fraction, higher is the secondary zone stoichiometric ratio, resulting a higher reduction in NOx. The optimum range of the SL2 was found to be from 0.8 to 0.87 uh, for the range of biomasses studied while keeping SR1 at 1.05 and primary zone residence time at 1.03 second. It was found that the reburning process while using coal as a reburn fuel has a negative effect on carbon burnout, but the utilization of biomass as reburn fuel reduced the negative effect on carbon burnout. In the case of fuel staging, or the uh, or the reburning, um, it was found that increase in reburn fuel fraction decreases SR2, resulting higher NOx reduction. NOx reductions of 83 and 84 percent were achieved with an optimum level of 15 uh, percent reburn fuel fraction. 
for chimil and cotton stack as compared to coal with 72% for same ribbon fuel fraction the stoichiometry of the ribbon uh, zone and the middle zone was varied uh, between 0.72 to 0.95 and the optimum value of for the reduction were obtained at sr2 uh, level of 0.8 it can be concluded that the addition of biomasses in the reducing environment significantly reduced nox formation co combustion of coal with biomasses also gave an an improvement in charn burnout efficiency uh, which could be due to higher volatile matter and biomasses and the higher reactivity of the porous biomass char so2 reduction of 21% and 22% was obtained with rff of 15% and 20% for she meal and cotton stock respectively Thank you very much. Uh, um, any questions? Thank you very much, Dr. Shahid, for your wonderful presentation. Um, I can see that there's a lot of praises uh, for your presentation in the comment section. Unfortunately, since we are short on time, we can just take one or two important questions. Um, so, sir, one of uh, the participants is asking, what about the pollution from coal combustion? Yeah, uh, what are the, uh, please repeat the question. Yes, yeah, sir, they're asking, what about the pollution uh, that results from coal combustion? Yes, the, this is a technology to reduce the pollution from, from the coal combustion. You have seen that the, we are trying to mix the biomasses that are the carbon dioxide neutral tools uh, with the coal to reduce the emissions from the coal power plants. Uh, the coal is a dirty fuel and it is a major source of the, uh, the pollution. Uh, the different technologies are being used to make uh, the coal as a cleaner fuel. The, one of the technologies is the co-combustion. And today we, I have presented the results of the uh, co-combustion of coal with biomasses, but uh, along with aided with the air staging and with the reburning uh, technology as well. And with that, you have seen that we have reduced the NOx emissions to 84 to 85%. And similarly, the sulfur dioxide emissions to 21 to 22%. And similarly, the carbon dioxide emissions also to 20 to 22%. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then another question we have is that what other plants can be suggested other than sugarcane that has high content of cellulose and hemicellulose? So there are uh, many of the biomasses that can be used, like the, uh, um, I have said the sugarcane bagasse, the cotton straw, um, and the, some of the people, they have worked on the uh, rice husk. Um, some of uh, people have worked on the, worked on the, uh, the, uh, the wheat straw. But I oppose this idea because these are the animal fodders. So we should use those biomasses like the uh, corn cobs uh, is a good biomass and abundantly available in, pa in Pakistan that can also be used uh, for co-firing with the, with the coal. And uh, some other biomasses like the falsa sticks, uh, when you uh, collect the falsas, you, you need to cut the bushes and those waste bushes can also be used in the power plants uh, to, uh, to, uh, to mix with the coal. So there are other uh, biomasses as well. Right, sir. And, and then uh, another person is asking what are, I think we have already covered this a little bit, what, what are the benefits of coal combustion compared to the traditional coal combustion for elect electricity generation? Yes, the uh, the uh, the only um, uh, the benefit is the environmental benefit uh, for the coal combustion uh, because the coal-fired power plants are are polluting uh, the the environment and uh, if we wa they want to comply with the uh, the environmental emission standards uh, they need to um, uh, um, spend a lot uh, to add. Uh, the chemical treatment uh, plants uh, for the flue gas treatments. Uh, so this is the one of the technology that is a retrofit technology in which you do not need an investment. Uh, you can just uh, mix a secondary fuel with the uh, with the coal um, aided with the air staging and the and the reburning or the three uh, three stage stage combustion. Uh, by adding these, you can reduce the emissions. Right, sir. and just one last question we can take. Uh, Somebody is asking, what are the hurdles in producing energy from coal? Uh, 
there are the hurdles if you look at the uh, worldwide the coal is the largest uh, source of power generation and the uh, the australia and the indonesia are the largest uh, exporters of the coal china and india uh, china is producing about 10 lakh megawatt and similarly india uh, i think about uh, 200 100000 megawatt from coal Uh, many countries are producing it is the largest source of power generation in pakistan the hurdles is the mining uh, we do not have an adequate uh, uh, adequate uh, infrastructure for the coal mining uh, and the our uh, excavation or the mining capacity is uh, uh, very very uh, small uh, this is the only hurdle uh, for you know the uh, mining infrastructure you need a modern technology uh, to Uh, to increase the rate of mining and then you need uh, a strong uh, rail network for the transportation of the coal and uh, these are some of the uh, the problems we we need to invest in the infrastructure development uh, for the utilization of coal uh, then other technologies are for the coal for the direct liquefaction you can convert the coal into the into the petrol into the diesel um, um, and similarly And there are technologies that you can gasify and you can make the natural gas out of the coal so there are different clean coal technologies that can be used and pakistan has abundantly available uh, uh, this resource of coal and pakistan should try to use it and right, i thank you very much sir we have more questions but unfortunately since we are short on time we cannot take them so uh, you may email those questions to me i'll be i'll be sure to forward them to dr shahid so with this we come to an end of today's session i would like to thank our honorable guest dr shahid munir for sparing his very precious time and for preparing such a wonderful and comprehensive presentation thank you very much sir and i would also like to thank the participants for joining us today um we hope to see you in future important events as well thank you very much everybody allah hafiz thank you thank you very much thank you allah hafiz